Good morning, The Point family. So glad you guys are tuning in here with us this morning. My name is Bree, and I'm going to be your host for this morning's service. What you're going to expect right 
singing to Jesus. We're going to worship our God. Uh, we're going to hear a great message, um, have communion, and then wrap it all up, back up again with some songs. So let's start it off.
sung about that God has for you this morning. So now, my friends, we've come to a time in our service where we are going to release our kids to their class. Now, what that means for you guys who are at home, which is everyone, if you guys have children who are preschool through fourth grade, here at the point we have curated your students and your kids' very own Sunday school lessons just for their brains. So if you guys want to head over to thepointwh.org, there's a kids tab right at the top, and that'll take you through whatever actually has all of the sermons that we've ever put out throughout this whole quarantine so your kids can learn about Jesus while you are learning what Jesus is doing in your life at the same time. So before we get to our teaching today, I have a question for you guys. Are you ready? Well, I can't hear your answers, so you're going to type them in the comments. So whatever social media platform you are watching, whether that's Facebook whether that's YouTube, or maybe, just maybe, you're sitting with your Point Life groups. Maybe you're sitting at one of the Point's home churches. Maybe you're sitting with your family, or maybe you're sitting by yourself, like I would if I was at home. <laughs> so if you guys um, want to answer this question in the comments, talk to the people who are next to you, and if there's no one next to you, my friends Christine and Ruth are online, and they want to hear your answers too. So type your answers in the comments wherever you guys are watching from. So the question for this week, if you are ready, is we are in uh, Illinois right now and I woke up this morning and my deck was covered in this beautiful, delicious, light, flaky snow. It looks like uh, the bottom of a Frosted Flakes box, just like sprinkled like all over my deck and it was beautiful. So since it's December now, if you could celebrate Christmas on the beach, hang on, <laughs> or with a bunch of snow, where would you like to celebrate Christmas? So answer in the comments, I'm looking forward to you. My vote's the snow, so if you voted for the snow, you're on the right team, okay. Bounding in love, you did one, got so much sun. 
church. It looks like right now a lot of beaches. I don't know. I'm seeing some snows too, but uh, a lot of beaches on here. So I don't know. Let us know. Let us know where you want to spend Christmas. Man, there's a lot of people on here today. Hey, David Cook, Keith Henry, Pat Patrick Cross, Bill Meyer, how you doing? Shout out there, Judy. Hope you guys are doing well. So uh, we are glad that you guys are here. We're heading into the Christmas season, and so we're going to be talking, obviously, uh, about Christmas. I was, speaking of Christmas, how many are you ready for Christmas yet? So look at you guys. Now, now tell me this. Is the reason that you're fairly ready for Christmas, and by that, I mean shopping. You got your shopping done? Yeah. Is that because COVID has driven you to Amazon, or what's the deal on that? Yes? Okay. So that's, that's where this is coming from. Okay. Um, I, I'm still going to be that last weekend shopper. That's just how I roll. So anyway, we, we're glad you guys are here. Before we get into uh, this upcoming series that we're starting today, uh, I, again, I am glad that you guys are here. It's been an interesting season. Um, how many of you would agree that when you think of Christians, when you think of people in churches, uh, Christians just come to mind, should be the most generous people on this planet? How many of you believe that? How many, how many of you write that in? Christians just should be uh, generous, right? And it's been an interesting year for all of us. To some degree or another, this whole COVID thing has affected us all. And uh, we've actually ended up having to shut the doors of the church building. But as we've said, and you guys have been amazing in this, just because we close the doors of the church building doesn't necessarily mean the church goes away, right? I mean, we're still the church, and we're still doing amazing things. There's more people connected to the point right now than we've seen in a long, long, long time. So church, thank you for being who we're called to be. Yeah. Um, thank you, token audience. Um, <laughs> this is good. Um, and so many of you have continued financially to be generous here at the church. And we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued giving and support. However, you knew there was going to be a however, didn't you? Right? However, I, I have to tell you, we... We have had to dip into our reserve funds, okay? We have a reserve fund set up, and we've had to dip into that quite significantly over this year because even though uh, the doors of the church may have shut down, we still have expenses, right? We still have to pay for this building. We still have lights. We still have staff. We have ministries that are still going on. And so um, we've kind of had to dip into some of those reserve funds. So here's what we need, and here is my ask to you. If you call the Point Church your home church, your community, here, here's what I would like to do. I would love for us to finish the year in the black and pay back those debt reserve funds, okay? Uh, excuse me, not debt reserve funds, our emergency funds. So basically pay all of our bills, make sure that all of our bills are paid, um, and then make sure those emergency funds are, are paid back. And actually, I think this is something that we can do fairly easy, okay? So I'm going to share with you just a few numbers, if you will. To get us caught up, the projected end of the year shortfall that we would have gone into some of our protected funds is $25,600. Now, even though we're short $25,000 plus, let me tell you something. The staff has done an amazing job. They've underspent in their budget $58,000, okay? So the staff has done an amazing job keeping things in check, um, and so that's, that's part of it. But still, COVID, all the things that have taken place... We've got a little bit of a shortfall. So the projected re weekly need, above and beyond what people are normally giving through their tithes and offerings, is $6,400 per week. Now, those are big numbers. Many of you look at those numbers and go, wow, that's really big. However, do you realize we have a lot of people that call North, or excuse me, The Point <laughs> Church their home, okay? And so if we divided that out, about 150 people or 150 giving units, and that's, that's what we have. We have people that are giving, about 150 people who are very generous in their, in their, in their giving and, and contributions and generosity. That would be a, a one-time giving for this month, to catch us up by the end of, the, uh, end of the, uh, this year, a one-time giving of $171. I mean, that's, see, now that makes it a little bit more doable, right? Um, and, and that turns into about $42.67 per giving unit weekly, okay? 
So that's how we can break this down. Now, hear me on this. Some of you hear that and um, you're like, that's a lot of money. Others of you hear that and you literally could catch us up with one, pay, with one check. Okay, I get that. And what we're asking in this is equal sacrifice, not necessarily equal amounts. Some of you give generously already. We thank you for that. We appreciate that. Some of you give here and there whenever you can. And I'm going to encourage you to become regular givers here at the point because I believe this, that there is an amazing cause in which we are doing, that we are here for. And that is to welcome the unchurched to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. And I believe the best way to do that is through the local church. And so I encourage you to become a regular giver to reach people for the cause of Jesus Christ. There's another segment of people in here that, that you call the Point Church your church, and you've never given regularly. You've probably never given and, and never taken the opportunity to partner with us in this effort, okay? And I'm going to encourage you to do that today, to, today, because, again, I believe that the church is a vital part of our community, and it's, and it's, and it's reaching out to create fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. So here's what I want you to do. Here is my ask. Right now, while you're listening, you probably have a device in your hand or you are close to a device, I would love for you to go to simply thepointwh.org. And when you go to thepointwh.org, or you can simply go to pointgive.org, this will take you directly. I want you to go ahead and go there. Go ahead, and it's going to look something like this. There's going to be a page that looks something like this. Go ahead. And, and I would love and encourage you to just give. Or you can stop by the church on Tuesdays from 3 to 6 o'clock here at the building and give that way. You can mail it in. You can use pay, you know, um, carrier pigeons, whatever the case may be. Get, you know, if you want to help out and support this cause, we ask you to do this. So on that page, if you go to pointgive.org, it says, how much would you like to give? That's the question. And this is what I want you to do. By, by praying and by faith, enter in the amount, walk through the steps, and give it. I believe this, that we can end the year not only in the black, but beyond what we dreamed or imagined, so that we can be generous to our community for the cause of Jesus Christ. All right? So that's my ask. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how the church responds. All right, so we're heading into this season, this Christmas season, and uh, I'm glad that you guys are with us. We're starting a new series today, simply entitled, He Will Be Called, okay? He Will Be Called. So if you have your Bibles or a Bible app, I'm going to encourage you to turn to Isaiah chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 9. Now, <clears throat> kind of a strange question, okay, but I'm going to ask it anyway. How many of you how many of you are expecting a child right now? Surprisingly enough, nobody in here raised their hand. Right? Oh, Shannon did. Oh, my gosh. Do you not know how this happened, Shannon? My goodness. Okay, so how many of, how many of you are expecting, and, and, and if you are, have you gotten to that point where you're trying to pick names? Or if you've had kids... Do you remember the absolute, you know, trying time of going and trying to pick names for your kids? I mean, it's, it's pretty important, okay? And there's rules involved. If you didn't know, there's rules in picking names for your kids. If you don't know the rules, I'm here to share them with you. This is going to help you out, okay? Sarah and Jonathan, you're getting married, and probably within the first year, you're going to be pregnant, and so you've got to be thinking about these kind of things, okay? All right? <clears throat> <laughs> what? Seriously. So here's some rules. I'm going to, Sarah, here's some rules. Okay. First rule is this. Jonathan. Jonathan's in here too. Jonathan. Okay. If your spouse dated somebody, you, you know, whatever their name is, you cannot ever, ever, ever till the end of the world, you can never name your child after somebody your spouse dated before you guys were married. Okay. And that's number one. Number two, if your parents or your spouse's parents had a friend okay, or somebody they knew that they just didn't necessarily like, they were weird, a little crazy, you can't, because your grandparents don't want to look at their grandchild and go, I remember that person, right? They don't want to do that, so you can't, you can't name that. And the other thing is, you've got to think about nicknames. 
So when you're naming your child, you have to think about, right, what their future is going to hold, especially on the playground or maybe when they get married, okay? So what I'm talking about is this. Let's say your last name is Man, okay? Let's say your last name is Man. You can't name your daughter Anita, right? <laughs> I'm looking for Anita Man. Anita Man, is there, right? You can't not do that. You know, if your last name is Wright, you can't name your daughter's name Eileen, okay? It's just, it's not, it's not going to work out. Eileen, right? It doesn't happen. How about this? What if you name your daughter Lois and she ends up marrying a guy by the name of Price? She's the lowest price? I mean, <laughs> if your daughter is Helen, okay, what if she ends up marrying like a Mr. Back? Then she's Helen Back, oh. right? That's, that's not cool, right? Names are funny. Names are funny. Um, my mom's surgeon, my mom's surgeon, when she had surgery one time, I'll never forget this. The surgeon's name was Dr. Whittle, right? And so names are important. Names are very important. My, my, when our firstborn came along, we ended up naming him Curtis. So his name is Curtis Harold Bycroft, okay? And so Mindy and I were talking about this, and, and when she got pregnant again, we didn't necessarily know if we were having a boy or a girl, so we were picking out names, and I'm like, Rodney. I want to have, you know, my, my son named Rodney. And so we got to thinking about this and talking about this. However, what was coming to our minds was every time that we would go to call our names, it would be Curtin Rod. And we're like, that doesn't work. That just doesn't work, okay? So obviously, names are important. Obviously, names are important. So in this series that we're going into, we're going to be looking at four of the names uh, of Jesus. Now, they're not the only names that Jesus has been labeled throughout history or in the Bible, but there, there are very four important names that Isaiah labels him, like 700 years. He prophesied about Jesus coming, and this is what he labels Jesus. So in Isaiah chapter 9, starting in verse 6, he's, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah says this, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And so today, what I want to do is, as we, as we look at these names, today I want to focus in on this name that Isaiah uses to represent Jesus, the coming Messiah, the Savior of the world, Wonderful Counselor. Now, Wonderful counselor is just simply an English word that's made up of two Hebrew words, peel and yayats, okay, yayats. Now, this word peel just simply means, so this word peel, meaning wonderful, means beyond understanding. Because I think what Isaiah was finding is there's no word that we have to reasonably describe the amazing awesomeness of who Jesus is going to be as our counselor, it's beyond words, okay? And yaetz simply means counselor, to advise, to consult. And today what I want you to focus in on, because I believe this is how Jesus counseled many times, was simply to guide people where they're at to where they needed to be. So a counselor. So Isaiah says one day Jesus is going to be born, a child is going to be given to us, and he will be our PL, yaetz, our wonderful Counselor, God in the flesh, he knows us, he cares about us, he understands us. Everything that you're going to be going through, Jesus understands. Therefore, he's going to be a wonderful counselor. As a matter of fact, um, the Hebrew writer follows this up when we read in Hebrews chapter 4. He says this, and we do not have a high priest, referring to Jesus as the high priest. We do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness. However, we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. In other words, track with me on this. Our high priest, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, our wonderful counselor, Jesus, has been through everything that we're going to go through. He's been there. He's, he's even been tempted the same ways that you're tempted, yet he was without sin. He understands our pains. He understands our hurts. He's experienced life just like you and I have. In the following verse, in Hebrews 4, 16, it says this. 
So let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence, with confidence, so that may, we may receive mercy and find grace to help us, now this is huge, in our times of need. Now let's, let's just stop there for just a second, because I want to focus in on this for just a minute. Especially this year, especially this season, especially this time we're in. Some of you right now may say this, <laughs> dude, I, I, I reflect, you know, I, I resemble that last statement. I, I have significant needs in my life right now, okay? I'm in a significant time, and I could really use a wonderful counselor. I could really use some good advice right now, right? I could use someone to guide me through this because I'm telling you, it's tough. So let's talk about the wonderful counselor. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's, let's talk about how he guides us. A lot of people um, never realize that Jesus, his main mission was to come for people in need, was to come for people who were sick. As a matter of fact, he says, I didn't necessarily come for those who were healthy, those who were righteous. I came for those who were sick. Luke 5, 31 says that. It's not the healthy that I came for. I came for the sick. And I have a question for you to consider this morning, okay? And this is a tough question, but this is one that I think we all have to answer, Okay? Here it is. Where are you sick today? Where are you sick today? And maybe I could change that to go, where are you hurting? <laughs> where are your hardships? Because truthfully, let's be honest. To some degree or another, to, at some point or another, we're all sick. And, and, and part of it is just because of the sin of the world that we're in, Right? We all battle weaknesses, vulnerabilities, strongholds. We, we all battle to some, you know, time or another, to some point or another. Dysfunctions, whether it's in our families, whether dysfunctions are at work, whether it's just simply life that we're, we're in. But I get it. Some of you, some of you, when I say this, you're ready to turn me off. Because let's not talk about that, Tim. <laughs> let's let's. Let's not talk about our illnesses. Let's not talk about our sicknesses. Let's not talk about our, uh, where we're at or where we're hurting because, hey, leave me alone. I, 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 don't, I don't have any problems, okay? I got this, okay? I've got this. How many of you say that, I've got this? Or how many of you know somebody who's going, I got this, and they're just living by the river? Denial, right? Because we have sicknesses in our lives, some of you are just like, you know, I'm fine, I, I, I can handle this. Others of you, you're on the opposite end of the spectrum going, right here, need a counselor, whoop, this guy right here, okay? Because your sicknesses are obvious. As a matter of fact, we try to hide our sicknesses, don't we? I mean, we try to put those in the ground, we don't want anybody else, we're kind of embarrassed by it. And so we kind of put those behind us, we don't want anybody to see that, but I'm telling you something, some of you need to realize this, your sickness is obvious and other people can see it. And, and, and so we need to deal with it, okay? Where are you sick? I'm just going to list off a few things, maybe spur some thinking. Some people, and I'm telling you, this has been a tough year for this. Some of you are just battling depression. Your sickness is depression. Every day you're wondering how you're going to get through the day. Some of you are wondering how you're going to get out of bed. Some of you are wondering, what is the next thing that's going to happen? I, 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 there's no hope for tomorrow, and, and I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get better in this. You're simply depressed, a heaviness, a weight, a sense of hopelessness, and that's your sickness. There's other, others of you that you're living with fear, okay? And I get it. Fear is real. The truth may not be real. I mean, we may be fearing over something that is nothing, or we may be fearing over something that is very, very real. But the truth is, your fear is real. And you're always wondering, what, what is going to happen next? And you're living with this kind of state of anxiety in life right now. And that's your sickness. And many times that leads to stress. And you've got your to-do list. And you're wondering how you're going to get it all done. And 
you got to shop for everybody. you got to get food ready. And, and, and if all possible, we're going to have people over to our house. And so we've got to get the house ready. It's got to be perfect. And the meal's got to be just so. And, and you start looking at this to-do list. And you've got all this stuff that's working uh, at work. You've got all this stuff that's building up at work. And you've got all these things that are building up with your kids because you're trying to figure out this homeschooling thing with COVID and all this. And all of a sudden, you're just stressed out. And the anxiety level is just, woo, going through the roof. And that's your sickness. Some of you, it's just financial stress. We've got all these bills to pay. And then I'm supposed to buy all this stuff for friends and family for Christmas. And if I don't keep up with that, then they're going to look, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of people are going to look down at me for not doing that. And so we get out another credit card and we, and it's tough. And, and, and you're stressed out over your finances and that's your sickness. And some of you are lonely. <laughs> Your sickness is just loneliness. You see happy families and you get on Facebook, you get on social media and you see all these, these positive things that are happening in other people's families and you're like, why can't I have this? Why, why do I have to be alone? Why do I have to eat alone, go to bed alone? I hate it. And that's your sickness. Some of you, it's more family sickness, right? Problems within your family and, and you don't necessarily know how to address them and Instead of being excited about the Christmas season, you're actually kind of dreading the fact that you're going to be around certain people. That's a sickness. You see, at different points of our lives, we're all sick. We all have some kind of sickness. And I think the best thing to do is just simply acknowledge that. As tough and as hard as it is to acknowledge that. Answer the question, where are you sick? And remember the good news that we have Here's, here's the good news. The reason I spent so much time on this is, is where we started today. That when we acknowledge that we have a sickness, we also have a wonderful counselor that wants to guide us through it. This is, this is the good news of Jesus Christ. And so you may be asking this question. Okay, Tim, how do I allow this wonderful counselor, how do I allow Jesus, if I am sick, if I do have these sicknesses, in my life, how do I allow Jesus, the wonderful counselor, to heal me? Okay? Let me just make, I'm going to make three suggestions today. Three. Okay? And the first one is this. When we connect with the wonderful counselor, the very first thing we have to do is be brutally honest. Be brutal, be, beautifully, brutally honest. Okay? There's an absolute rich story in the New Testament. We can find it in John chapter 4. It's, it's of this woman who was probably very much like us, okay? Uh, she simply wanted to be loved. She wanted to be cared for. She wanted to find purpose and meaning in life. And what she was doing is that she was trying to find that in relationships with men, okay? And so she had literally been married five different times. And the man that she's with now, she's not married to, but she's shacking up with, okay? And she just wanted to be loved. She wanted to find purpose and meaning. One man after another, after another, bad relationships, several men, they end up just... You know, give, she's ended up giving up on marriage at this point. Then one day, she goes out to the city well, okay? She's getting water, and she meets this guy by the name of Jesus. Yes, that Jesus, the wonderful counselor. And she notices right away there's something different about this guy, incredibly different than any man she's ever met. And the interesting thing is, is that Jesus strikes up a conversation with her, and he and he, he, he goes right into a serious point of this conversation about her shacking up with somebody else. Some probing questions, okay? And she comes clean. Jesus asks her, he says, okay, I want you to go back in town. I want you to bring your husband to me. Now, many of us, and she could have done the same thing, could have simply said, oh, you know, he's busy right now. He, he can't come. He's at work. He's at the shop. He's not going to be able to. He's out of town, whatever the case may be. She could have said anything. He's busy. He, he can't show up right now. But she chose, it was her choice, and she chose to speak to the wonderful counselor and tell him the brutal truth. In verse 17, she just simply says, I have no husband. And Jesus takes it a step further and goes, yes, you have no husband. You've had five. And the person you're living with right now is not your husband. He sees, he sees through it and takes it to the next step, but next level. But I will tell you this. Because she was brutally honest, they were able to dialogue, continue the dialogue. And, and he shares with her, look, I, you, know, you came to get water, but I'm going to tell you something. I am the living water. I am what you need. 
I, I have been what you are searching for. I will quench the thirst that you have. I will take care of the needs that you have. You should be in my life. You should allow me into your life, and I will bring the healing that you need. And why was this able to happen? I believe this. This was able to happen because it started with her being brutally honest. Some of you right now, maybe for either the first time or the first time in a long time, you need to come before the wonderful counselor and just simply be brutally honest. Share with him your sickness. Share with him maybe your doubts. Share with him today. Be honest today with him in almost a scary sort of way. Because I'm going I'm to I'm speak to a few of you right now. So I've been in a lot of conversations with, with several people, and here's one of the things I keep hearing. I've been praying to God, I've been praying to God, I've been praying to God, I've been praying to God. And you're coming up to where your faith is starting to waver. And you're wondering, God, are you good? God, are you there? God, do you care? And so maybe you're brutally honest with him today. The wonderful counselor and say, I'm having issues with our relationship right now. Just be brutally honest, because I believe this, he can take it. Talk to him about your faith. Talk to him about your, how you're not necessarily seeing or feeling or sensing him in your life. He can handle it. Here's the second thing. That one was big, but I'm going to tell you this is the second thing. I've been talking to many of you, and you need to be honest with the wonderful counselor about your marriage. I'm telling you, I've been, I've been talking to a lot of you, and really, if God doesn't do something of significance in your marriage soon, you're in big big trouble. And you know this. You're telling me this. My suggestion is for you to go to the wonderful counselor and be brutally honest. Go to the Peel, Yaetz, the wonderful counselor, Jesus, and be honest, brutally honest. This is what I know. He can handle it, but when, and, until you're able to acknowledge it, until you're able to speak truth, brutal truth, he can't give you the counsel or the guidance to move forward. And this is what I know, that when we cast our cares upon Jesus, scriptures tell us that he loves us, he cares for us, he'll pour his mercy and lavish us with his care. And his burdens are not heavy, they're, they're actually light. As a matter of fact, he will give you rest and peace. So scriptures tell us. So be brutally honest. The second thing is this. I want to suggest that we learn to listen to the wonderful counselor's voice. You know, this seems kind of obvious, but I think many times we may even be brutally honest. We may say, hey, where are you at? But have we taken the time to actually listen to what the wise counselor has to say? The wonderful counselor. There's in Mark chapter 9, you can read this whole story. Jesus took three of his disciples up on this mountain, and when they're up there, Jesus becomes... Uh, this glow-in-the-dark, glittery, shiny Jesus, okay? It's called the Mount of Transfiguration. And, and so Elijah and Moses show up. It's an amazing time. The three disciples were like, this is crazy. Let's build a tent. Let's stay here. Let's build a monument. Let's build, you know, this place, this altar to worship. And, and it's an amazing time. And then all of a sudden, God shows up on this mountain, and he speaks, okay? And then God spoke, and I think when God speaks, especially on this, in this particular time, people listened. And this is what he said. He says, this is my son. He's talking about Jesus, in whom I'm well pleased. I love him. Listen to him. God, the creator of all things, the God who spoke the cosmos into existence, looks at Jesus and says to us, listen to him. Listen to what he has to say. God said, listen to my son Jesus. And you might say, okay, listen to Jesus. Listen to him. Listen to what he has to say. All right, that's good. That's good advice. So how does he speak? How does Jesus speak into my life? That's, that's very important to know, right? If we're, if we're supposed to listen to him, how does he speak? Well, I'm going to give you, there's all sorts of ways I believe this, that when Jesus speaks, we should listen I'm going to tell you, this. there's some very simple things. I'm going to just lay these out. Number one, if you're not reading the word of God, if you're not in the Bible, you should be. Because Jesus is speaking directly to us through his word. Okay? Listen to him. The other thing is this. 
it may be sometime, humbly I say this, it may be God speaking through me to you today. There may be times where you're just listening to somebody. It could be the person that you're sitting next to. It could be someone that you work with. It could be me today, right? It could be a song. You're listening to a song. You're, you're, you're listening to something, and you're, all of a sudden you're just like, wow, that really spoke to me. I knew that that was from God. It could be in the daily devotions that you should be doing, right? It, it, he could speak through circumstances. He could simply speak to you in the quiet moments that you're having with him. Did I stump you on that one? How many of you are actually finding five minutes, ten minutes, just to quiet yourself and listen? Listen to the voice of God. Because as I look at scripture, as I have noticed in my own life, God rarely screams at us. Most of the time, it's a whisper where you have to lean in. You have to pay attention. You have to focus on what he's saying. So listen to the wise counselor. I... uh, the more, that, the more that you do it, the easier it becomes. The more you understand when Jesus is speaking to you. It's kind of like, uh, for those of you who are husbands, you get this. When your wife speaks, you listen, right? Whether or not you acknowledge, that's one thing, but you listen, okay? I can be in a room of people. I can be in, this, this room could be full of people. And I know when my wife goes, Psst, I know her, Psst, and I better go, when she goes, Psst, okay? And the same thing is true with our relationship with Jesus. It took me a while to figure out what her pss was, but once I got it, now I'm in tune with it. And so seek out, how does Jesus speak to you? Listen to his voice, okay? And then this, this is my final suggestion. And this is going to be the, this might be the sticking point for many of us. Because some of us, We're going to be brutally honest. Jesus, I'm hurting, I'm sick, I got this issue in my life. And so we're listening to Jesus, and this may be the sticking point because this is what's going to happen. Jesus is actually going to respond to you when you ask. He's going to speak to you. And here's what we've got to do. Do what the wonderful counselor tells us to do. This, again, this may be the sticking point for many of you right here, okay, because We need to do what Jesus asked us to do. If we want to get healed, if we want to become healthy, if we want to get unstuck from being sick, if we've asked the wonderful counselor for advice, for guidance, what should we do? Do it. Do it. Even when we don't feel like it, even when we don't understand, and I'm telling you something, even when it doesn't make sense. Truthfully, Jesus can... Can you just lean in on this one? Because this is what you're paying me for, okay? If you have coffee, take one more swig. Put it down. Lean in. When you're truthful with a counselor, the counselor's going to speak. And it's been my experience and what I've seen in Scripture and what I've seen in other people's lives that when Jesus responds, when the wonderful counselor responds, He's going to ask you to do something that does not make logical sense. He just doesn't. As a matter of fact, it's going to seem a little weird, 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 not going to make sense. There's a great example. Um, In Mark chapter 10, okay, this, this rich guy comes to Jesus. This rich guy comes to Jesus, and he's like, okay, wonderful counselor. He doesn't call him wonderful counselor, but that's who he is. He said, Jesus, how do I inherit eternal life? Okay, this is in Mark chapter 10. This guy's fairly rich, and, and if he were here today, uh, he would be the kind of guy that you would look at and go, wow, this dude really cares about his image. He cares about his car. He cares about his house, his hobbies, all these things. And, and if you look at the guy, he's done a really amazing things, okay? I mean, he's taking care of people. He's helped people out. He doesn't swear often. He only tells little white lies occasionally when he needs to, you know? So he's a really good person, in other words. And so he comes to Jesus and says, how do I inherit eternal life? Teacher, I've done all these things. I've kept your rules. I've kept, you know, since I was a little boy. I've been great. I've been a nice kid. I've been a nice man. Okay, 
And this is how Jesus responds to this person who for all practical purposes was a really moral and ethical guy. He says this in in Mark chapter 10. Knowing Jesus, knowing the sickness of this individual, knowing that he actually placed possessions over his relationship with Jesus, Jesus says this in Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 21. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine, hear me on this, Jesus felt genuine love for this man. But there's still one thing, sir, that you haven't done, Jesus said. Go and sell all of your possessions and give the money to the poor, and then you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Let that sink in for a moment. If Jesus came to you today, you were brutally honest with him. You said, Jesus, I'm having issues. And Jesus responded, go and sell all of your possessions and give to the poor. What would you do? What would you do? You see, Jesus' request and the, and the wonderful counselor when he responds to us, many times it doesn't make sense and it's rarely easy. But he does it out of love. Did you catch that? He does it because he loves us. You see, I believe this. A wonderful, amazing, awesome counselor is never just going to tell you what you want to hear. He's going to tell you what you need to hear. Jesus looked at him with genuine love. It wasn't out of spite. It wasn't playing games. It wasn't for any other reason. Jesus saw through to his sickness, which was control of money and possessions and things. Jesus loved him. Jesus told him things he didn't want to hear. Why? Why would Jesus do that? Because he loved him and he didn't love the situation or the place that he found himself in. The man here. So, oftentimes, I will be honest, I bite my tongue. And maybe I shouldn't bite my tongue so often, but I, I gotta tell you, I hear people say this all the time. Well, Jesus would never ask me to fill in the blank. There's no way that Jesus would ask me to stay in this marriage relationship. Because right now, I, I don't want to be in this marriage relationship. Oh, yeah? Ask Hosea, who God said, go marry that whore. And she kept cheating on him. And he said, stay in that relationship. Maybe to get out of that dating relationship that you're in, but we, we're, we're soulmates, Tim. Yeah, but you're unequally yoked. And the scriptures say, don't be unequally yoked with that person. Go sell everything and give it to those in need. Dude, Jesus would never say that. Yeah, he did in person. <laughs> Stay celibate for the rest of your life. What? To give up this part of my life, to give up that part of my life, to, to trust him with those areas of my life, to stop pursuing the American dream. Whoa, Tim, did you just really go there? To stop pursuing the American dream in order to pursue the kingdom of God. To downsize in order to minister to others better. To risk something grander and what you're risking right now to minister to those who need minister to. I would tell you that uh, when Mindy and I came to the Point Church, when we landed at the Point Church years, 18 years ago, we felt that God had called us into ministry. God had called us. You know, there was, there were some things going on in our lives and we were just pleading to the wonderful counselor, what do we need to do? And we listened, and we prayed, and Jesus spoke. You see, it's been my experience in my life, and it's been my experience to watch other people and what I see in Scripture. But sometimes God's going to ask you to do something that's totally illogical and weird, and that's exactly what he did when he called us here. To give up our jobs. To displace our family. And, and, and interestingly enough, when I was going to school, when we, when we gave up our jobs so that I could go back to school and we were making as little money as we've ever made in our married life, he said, continue to give generously. And we did. 
to change everything that we found security and just give that stuff up and, and move to a city where you guys don't really know anybody, nobody, and minister to them. I want you to go and minister to them for me. And Tim, when people say, aren't you taking this Jesus thing a little too far? Stay steadfast. Tim, Mindy, walk through doors that seem scary, weird, illogical at times. But this is where I'm calling you to. And I'm telling you, when we listen, when we obey, as odd as it may seem, it's been an amazing journey. I look forward to where he's taking us into the future. It's been tough. I'm not saying it's always been easy, but it's been amazing. Because the wonderful counselor knows. He knows what he's asking us to do. And as hard as it may seem, as illogical as it may seem, as weird as it may seem, we need to trust him. We need to trust him. For those of you who are saying, Jesus would never ask me to do these things, I'm telling you, it's been my experience, it's been, I see it in scripture, that the things that you're saying Jesus would never ask me to do, he probably is, and he's probably going to continue to do so. And he's going to tell you to do these things as the wonderful counselors, our Savior, not to play games with us, but because he wants to take you on an amazing journey of healing, of progress, of being used for his kingdom. Now, I don't know how to say this any more passionately than what I'm saying to you today, but I, I will say this. When we don't follow what the wonderful counselor has for us, the advice that he gives us, our faith is a joke. Because faith without deeds is no faith at all. And I will tell you, you will continue to live an unfulfilled and unvictorious life when you don't submit to the wonderful counselor's advice and it breaks his heart. But when he speaks to you, because you've been brutally honest and you've asked for him to speak to you, when you speak to him and you obey, I guarantee you he brings healing. He brings healing in ways that you couldn't possibly understand. He brings a peace that passes all understanding. He brings strength in the midst, midst of your weaknesses. He brings love and grace and mercy and forgiveness that you cannot do on your own. Be honest, listen to him, obey his advice for he is the wonderful counselor. He is the one who brings hope for the hopeless. He is the one who brings light into the darkness. He is the one who brings faith to the shaken and he is the one who brings healing to the broken because Jesus is the wonderful counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. So God, today, for those of us who are sick, for those of us who know we need some healing in our lives, wherever that is in our lives, Lord, I, I pray that, that we can come before you right now and we can be brutally honest. God, we're, we're stretched right now to, to be as honest as we are, but we want to be honest. And God, we pray that you would speak in ways that we cannot miss. Allow your whisper to become more of a roar in our hearts and our minds. That we would never miss what you have for us. The counsel, the guidance that you have for us. And God, I pray that when you ask us to do something that's weird and illogical, it doesn't make sense. Lord, that you give us the strength encouragement, the peace to take that step because God I know this that when we do it's an amazing ride it's an amazing journey so God I pray if there are people here today that need to, to go from where they're at to where you want them to be that they submit and they surrender themselves to you today through the power of Jesus Christ the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace the everlasting
Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free last, he has ransomed me, his grace runs well, I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, it's free. celebrating our 25th anniversary and we're here to give you the communion message. It's kind of noisy out here with the waves and everything going on, but uh, Oh my gosh, I think somebody's drowning out there. I got this. Saving lives is hard. I'm half so hoffed out. <laughs> so we're just here to celebrate our anniversary and we just want to bring you guys a live communion message. And uh, obviously um, Jesus is our rock. And why we do communion is because we celebrate him, we honor him, we remember him and the sacrifice that he made. 
Um, just to get the, the, the meaning behind that, uh, I want to read a, a verse uh, in Matthew 7, 24 um, to 27. It says, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes and torments, and the floodwaters rise, and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock and solid rock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And you know what uh, Jesus is saying there, these are his words, is that if you build stuff on sand, like we kind of did an example out there, but it was really windy, so I really couldn't get the, the visual experience, but you guys know what I mean is there's all kinds of temptation out there and world views and just all kinds of crazy stuff that can just, like those waves, just come crashing down and, and, can, and ruins lives. And, um, but if you listen to all that kind of stuff, your, your foundation is sand and it's just gonna be easily washed away. You're gonna be, you're gonna be swept up into all that, that evilness and it's just gonna keep you away from God. Well, Jesus wants you to do the opposite. He wants you to put your faith and trust in Him and build a foundation on Him and His teachings and what He says in, uh, in the Bible, God's Word. Um, no matter how hard those waves come crashing down, if it's built on solid rock, um, you, will, you will survive because He is Jesus. And that's why uh, you know, we put our faith and trust in Him because He is the only one worthy to save us from our sin and to have eternal life with him after, you know, this world is over. And I know I was trying to save <laughs> my wife's life out there in the water, but I can't save lives. Nobody can save his lives truly, except eternal life, except Jesus. And he is the only one worthy. And if you put your faith and trust in him, he will never, ever let you down. So we celebrate him today in partaking in communion, and drinking uh, the grape juice that uh, that you have to celebrate and remember uh, Jesus' blood being spilled on that cross and the cracker or whatever you, you use uh, to represent his body being broken. We miss you here. Um, wish you guys could be with us. We can't wait to see you when we get back. Love you. Bye.
shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children Rejoice! 
So once again, my friends, um, I pray, and all of us here at the point, pray that you take that blessing that they just sung about and receive that for yourself because that's what Jesus has for you today. Now, if today was the first day, maybe ever, or maybe in a really long time, that you've been brutally honest with your creator and the man who died on the cross for you, and this is the first time you've been brutally honest and saying, I'm sick and I need help, and you don't know how to take the next steps, or maybe you're nervous, or maybe the people who are around you, you might not want them knowing yet. <laughs> but let me encourage you and let me assure you, my dear, <laughs> that what you are going through right now, God obviously knows what you're going through and he knows what it's gonna look like when he grabs your hand and when you reach out to him and you guys walk the rest of that life path together. Just letting you guys know, if you are local, once again, uh, Tuesdays, starting at three o'clock, three until 6.30, our pastors are here. There are staff here that are ready to lead you, to pray for you, to be with you. Uh, Tuesdays, if you're local. If not, DM us, give us a call, go to thepointwh.org. This is a serious issue uh, that we would love to come alongside of you and, and help you with. Ultimately though, just like Tim said earlier, God is your wonderful counselor, and God is the one who's going to pick up the phone at any time, any night, <laughs> any time of day. He's going to be the one that's with you and for you, <laughs> just like that blessing song. So my friends, I pray that you receive what you heard today. Take that. Let that marinate in your brain. Uh, but don't just leave it. Don't just log off and be like, okay, <laughs> back to where I was, because work starts on Monday. No, this is a life change that needs to happen in this season. So let it happen for you because your life is gonna be way better on the other side of this pit that you're in right now. So we're here to help. God is your wonderful counselor. Take that and remember that this week. Have a great week. Ciao.